Well, it's another gorgeous day in Texas. Uh, it's early in the morning, probably 9.30ish, I forget. Figured I need to get out here and get really cracking on this today, see if I can get this transom at least glued together. Um, so, let me bring up speed of what's going on. So remember, yesterday we uh, cut our template out of the pink stuff from Home Depot. Um, and then what I do is I label, because I never can remember, you know, did I use this side on the inside or whatever. So that way this is sitting on the inside, starboard and port. There's the only way that you can, you know, the only one way it's gonna go in. So what I did is I laid it out on my three quarter inch plywood and I traced it, I had to trace it kind of like that because I still need to get another layer and that's the only way I could get another layer. So you need to make sure you plan out uh, exactly uh, where everything's gonna, gonna go so that way you don't you know, have a whole lot of wood waste. One thing I discovered last night that I need to kind of fix and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet is that my hole is not uniform in the keyhole as far as thickness. It starts down here, it's pretty close to a half inch, and as it goes up the keyhole, it thins out to almost a quarter inch at the very top. So I need to figure out a way to level that because you do not want the, uh, the, the transom plate to be uh, uneven or untrue to the outside of the, uh, the gimbal bearing or the gimbal housing. So what I'm thinking of doing is building up what I need as far as just a normal you know, transom and then building the, uh, uh, building the, uh, the thickness at the top with some glass. So I guess I gotta figure that out before I get any further, you know, but I'm gonna at least get this thing um, out, you know, put together and uh, glued together and then waterproofed. And then we'll figure that out, I'm sure here in a little while. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and then we're gonna worry about, we're gonna dry fit it and then see about the second layer, which we're not going all the way across the second layer. All we're doing is going to right about here so it encompasses the first stringer. Um, so that's it for now. Okay, so I've got the first layer cut out and I've got it kind of dry fit in and I need to, uh, you see my little blue marks right there? That's where I need to do a little bit of trimming. It's actually touching the, uh, the hole where you don't want it to. So I need to kind of uh, trim those back a little bit. You want a, a gap underneath it so that way you can you can put your putty in there and put that little rounded edge the fillet to to go down to the hole and I'm going to fill in the strakes uh, also with um, with the, uh, the what do you call it um, the putty uh, the peanut butter so I got a little bit you know you want a little bit of a gap underneath it so that way you can you can round everything out and make it nice and neat uh, and not don't want the wood touching straight to the hull on the bottom but uh, that's the first one. And I also ran into a little bit of a, a concern. Um, this boat seemed to have a wrong thickness transom. Uh, what Mercruiser wants is they want two to two and a quarter inches. And it looked like they put two half inch together and then layered, so it was about an inch and seven eighths. Uh, and it was off as far as the, the level is concerned of the angle. So if I do two three quarter inch with my half inch outside, I'm sitting right at two inches and that's dry. That's without any mat on it whatsoever. So once I put mat and everything on, I should be right at two and an eighth to two and a quarter, which will be perfectly fine. So it'll be actually stronger than what they what came out of the boat originally, which is you know pretty impressive. But uh, anyway, so that's it so far. I'm gonna go do some more trimming and just double check the fit. Okay, so I've got it trimmed to exactly where I want it to be. Um, real happy with its fit. A little rough, but what you do whenever you get the other side glued on, you take your belt sander and you go around the whole outside and make it look all nice and pretty. You see my two little blue lines right there? That's where my second layer is going to stop. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll feather that in so that way the fiberglass looks good. Um, so that's where I am right now. Um, I'm gonna go cut the second layer, screw it on temporarily, put it in here and just kind of see where things fit. Okay, so you wanna make sure you save your template. So we're gonna throw this over in the corner. You use this for cutting fiberglass and stuff like that on the way. It makes it much easier than just trying to eyeball it. Um, <clears throat> so what I've done is I've cut, I went back and looked at some old pictures uh, that I took before I took this out and this center portion or the, the thick portion is actually much narrower than I thought. You see where I, I thought it went all the way over to here? Well actually the main stringer uh, actually comes up more like kind of right here. That's the, two, the center portion of it. And this was actually not attached to the main part of the stringer. This was actually just to give thickness to the, to the transom. So I figured let's keep it the same, let's not make it any different. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually sand this down a little bit and I'm actually gonna put a, a, like a, a filler so that way the fiberglass has something to lay against whenever I put the skin on it. So that's where I am right now. I've temporarily screwed it into place because I'm gonna actually put it in there, make sure it fits and uh, do one final fitment and then I'm gonna take the screws out. Uh, and while it's in there, I'm gonna trace my, my keyhole 
so that way I can take my trusty drill here, drill through it, uh, all the way through the center portion, so that way I'm not drilling on either side. And then I'm going to use my awl thread, which is up underneath my uh, uh, toolbox, with a couple of 2 by 4s going side to side, so I can tighten it down and really cinch it up. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. But like I said, I've got standard sheet rock screws in it right now, just holding it up, and uh, we'll go from there as soon as I make sure that uh, the fitment is what I like. Okay, after the test fitting, um, I had my son actually trace this while I pushed up against the transom. So that's the keyhole, so this is what's going to be up against the hull of the boat. Um, and I, what I did is I drilled, drilled two three-quarter inch hole, um, three-quarter inch uh, size holes right here. And then I've got a couple of two-by-fours. They're going to go across here once I put all the glue. And you're going to take your trusty awl thread, run it through the hole, and then you're going to tighten it up from the other side. And you'll have another 2x4 on the other side, so that way you get a nice clamp. And you can see that gives us nice clamping power all the way across. So that's, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to show you guys how uh, I glue transoms together. Now, I know there's a million and one ways to do this. I use PO glue, and I'm going to show you how I use the, how the PO glue trick works. Now, you can use uh, epoxy, you can use all kinds of other type of stuff to glue the two pieces together. I've just found this work to work fine on my glass tron this year, so I'm sticking with what I know. Okay, what we have here is our standard PO Premium polyurethane construction adhesive. And I got the big bad boys. Uh, and we have a notch trowel. Um, these are what you use for actually laying tile, which I've done a whole bunch of tile in my house, so these work out nicely. What you're going to do is you're going to actually take this and you're going to squeeze a whole bunch of it out on here. And then you're going to take your notch trowel and you're going to actually spread it out. And then you're actually going to use it at, oh, I think it's about a 12 or 13 degree, actually it's more like a 30 degree angle. And you're going to actually drag it out to where you're going to get ridges. And those ridges allow you to put it in there and then back and forth, back and forth to really get a good bond. You don't want to just put a glob on here and then squish it down. You don't get good coverage. You want to make sure that you, you trowel it out just like you do when you're tiling and get a nice coverage. So I'm going to squeeze some of this junk out, get it going, and then the nice thing about these holes, they allow you to line up exactly where you want it. All right, so don't, uh, don't be shy about the PO glue. Put lots of it on here. Make sure you get good coverage. This one's got some air bubbles in it. You think you got enough coverage, put it down, you'll take your uh, trowel and just start troweling it out. Make sure you get all the way to the edge. And don't worry about going over a little bit because you're going to actually make a fillet here pretty quickly. And you don't want a super thick amount of this stuff. It takes a little bit and it will absolutely hold like concrete. And it's messy and it stinks. If it wasn't so uh, well ventilated in here, I'd have to be wearing a, a mask. All right, so looks like I've got a little bit left over. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake it off I'm going to get a scrap piece of wood over here. And I'm going to do a final trialing. And I'm going to scrape off what I don't need. Now you can save this for the next step here in a minute. Uh, you can actually use it to kind of fillet your mixture. Or your, uh, edges. Alright. Okay, so I think that's what we got everything where we need it. And put this down for a second. Nice. Stuff came out all over the place. Okay. Flip this over. 
Drop it on there. <laughs> Look at that, I put it on upside down. So you guys, you gotta pay attention. Don't get ahead of yourself. You can see how well it suctions on there already. There we go. Move it around real good. Just kind of sliming around on there to get good coverage. Okay. So what I'm going to do whenever, while I'm waiting for this, or to, before I put these clamps on, I'm going to put some temporary screws to kind of hold this down. Check my alignment on the holes. Alright, you can see I screwed in in four places uh, the, uh, the screws all the way around. And I'm going to actually put the first one on here. Make sure your hole is fairly clean of the, of the, the gunk because uh, it'll actually glue these in the hole if you're not careful. So you want to make sure that you got the PL glue out of your hole. That sounded bad, but you know, well. Uh, Screw these down really good. Okay. Actually, you need to make sure you put the other side of the board on this side. You need clamp force all the way across, not just in one isolated location. And what the what the boards do that go across the two by fours is they actually give you uh, more clamping force across a longer area. Now, the longer the area that you go, the less clamping force you get because obviously your clamp the most amount of pressure is in the center. All right, so I'm going to put one on the opposite side. Okay, so this one's kind of snugged up, and we'll do the other side just the same. Both of them are on now, so that way I've got them with the clamps on both sides. The next thing you need to do is do a little bit of tightening to get them to kind of start clamping, and then what you want to do is you want to remove your temporary screws, because those screws don't pull it down enough, they just kind of ice, they, they, they locate it, and if you don't take them out, it's not going to actually clamp, put enough force on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those out and then tighten those down really good as much as I can and watch this stuff ooze out on the sides. All right, both of them are done. Uh, they're tightened down a lot and a lot of stuff oozed out and dripped all over the floor. Uh, and then what I did is I went around and smoothed the edges just to make it a little easier for sanding because what I'm going to do is this is a little uh, on the rough side as far as the step down right here. Uh, and that's to compensate for the tilt of the hull. And so what I'll do is I'll take my belt sander and, and really go over that and make it nice and smooth and clean. And then I'm going to go around and round all these edges off with my belt sander. Does that allow you to wrap the fiberglass around this much easier when I'm waterproofing it? Uh, and it's got some, some rough areas that I need to clean up, but that's what the belt sander's for. So uh, now it's just a waiting process. This stuff takes, uh, I want to say, 24 hours to, uh, to dry. So uh, I can't really do anything else. So I'm going to start looking for, uh, I have up in my paint supplies up there somewhere, my little uh, roller, so I have my little paint roller. And I can't remember if it's a four inch or a six inch for uh, just rolling on resin and stuff like that. Not a fiberglass roller, but just a little four inch foam roller. So that way I can go get refills from, uh, from Lowe's. But 
I think that's it for this weekend. There's really not much else I can do. I mean, you can't put stringers in until Mr. Transom's done, and I'll get this done this week. The nice thing is that you can come out there and throw a couple of coats on it uh, pretty easy um, after work. It's not like there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do to clean up and uh, all that good stuff. So that's what's going on now.